And I want to ask you guys something. How many of you are familiar with the Van Allen belts? You guys uh, familiar with that Van Allen belts? Anybody? The Van Allen belts are two. It's almost like a big shield. And in that big shield, you know, they didn't go to the moon because they had to pass through the Van Allen belts. But we're not here to discuss that. I want to discuss something else and briefly. Before I get into something else. The Van Allen belts are generated by Earth. There's actually radiation coming out of the Earth. Every time the Earth takes on, Radiation, solar winds is where it actually comes from because of the sun charges the earth, right? The earth takes in that energy, right? And some of the high, some of the higher altitude collisions, they're responsible for both the, both the auroras that you see in the North and, and South Pole. Those are high speed collisions at different altitudes producing specific colors. When high-speed particles collide into oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen, and so forth and so on. But the Earth absorbs all of that, and it cranks out radiation, right? So Earth, just like the sun, the sun causes, or the sun produces what's called the heliosphere. And it's around the entire solar system. It's quite huge. Without the heliosphere, galactic cosmic rays would have taken us over by now, and there'd be no life anywhere. But because of the heliosphere, galactic cosmic rays are trapped in this magnetic shielding, which the sun uses just like the Earth produces the Van Allen belts. Recently, through observation and a lot of uh, probes, they have found that the Van Allen belts are, in fact, a spherical set of walls that are around the Earth. Shields, just like the sun has shields, so do we. Smaller, but same principle. A lot of people are, you know, many people are looking for some object to come and do damage to the earth. But when we read prophecy, we understand that not only will we have that issue, but there are some other issues that were not caused by impacts on the earth, right? One of the problems, one of the biggest problems was the sun. In the Bible, it says an angel poured his vial into the sun and the heat of the sun scorched people so bad. It's just terrible. If this is a woe, right, the vials of wrath is what it came from, then it's not going to be slight. There are predecessors to that event also. Right now, the sun is a lot hotter than what it used to be, right? So is Earth. Most of you by now, you know this talk of heat is not uh, mumbo jumbo it's an actual it's, it's fact things are changing on the earth and in the atmosphere right things are changing changing fast i want to take your attention to the van allen bells because imagine if our solar system the heliosphere were to begin to collapse like it is right now it's collapsing so uh, the heliosphere which protected this entire solar system for a long, 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 long time, it's collapsing in several areas. Now, in all those areas where the collapse is found, a heating event is taking place. It's like uh, unnatural heat. Radiation translates into heat. And when it becomes denser, it becomes more potent, more dangerous, hot, you name it. It's heating up Jupiter. Just because it's so incredibly cold out there. But some of the gases are changing into other elements because of heat that, that nobody thought ever existed on another planet. They're heating up even more. Jupiter, it, it, you're going to hear talk of Jupiter igniting is what you're going to hear talk of. See, just recently, in, in the last five years, they found out that Jupiter is hundreds of times hotter than what anybody ever suspected. That was solidified in 2021. So the real data came back this year that uh, Jupiter is much hotter than anybody ever suspected. They've also recently started looking at something like the Van Allen belts around all planets and the interactions between the two. And it just so happens the position of, positions of the planets are directly relational to their outer shielding. The shielding of the planets 
have put them in the orbit that they're in. The shielding, all of them. Due to the breakdown of the heliosphere, there's also a breakdown of these natural shields that the Earth and other planets have. They may not have an atmosphere like ours. Them do. Even Mars has shielding, although very slight, it has shielding. It's, it's collapsed in on itself, but it still has shielding. In ancient times, the planets were in different locations. The further back you go, you begin to see this. And after the last calamity, the stars had been in the place they are now. But prior to that calamity, the stars were in different positions. They weren't really in different positions. We were. So uh, Jupiter was very close, which is why you see some of the more ancient imagery they're digging up now. Because you have to remember something. Every year they dig deeper into the Earth, they find deeper and deeper artifacts. So the deeper they dig, the older the civilization was. And it seems like the, the deeper they dig, the more advanced civilizations are becoming. Of course, some of you have heard this before, but it's becoming more and more obvious. Right? Imagine in this day and age, we use something called transistors, we use resistors, right? Ceramic, wire round, you name it. We use all these different types of electric components, and now we have IC chips or integrated circuits. And then we have uh, processors, which are tiny, right? Just real tiny. They're digging up places in the earth. I, I won't mention them now. I'll mention some of the components like a transistor with germanium and silicone and all the all the plates are intact. In fact, it's a transistor bound in a crystal. It's a transistor with metal leads, capacitors, right? Electrolytic capacitors, not ceramic, electrolytic with the two plates, with the air in between, right? A little tiny thing. Can you imagine a resistor the size of your keyboard? A capacitor the size of your desk? This is what these guys are digging up. How, who would make a capacitor that big? Well, you had to be much bigger to make something that way. Anyway, they, they've dug things like that. up. They've even found names common to the names that we have right now that's confusing people. It's just confusing. You, if there's no way you can dig down miles and find a Timex watch. How, how can that be? How can you find a shoe? Well, it has a strange name, but something similar to what we have now. Some of the names are, it, it, you know what? It is baffling. It baffles everybody when they find these things. And you know how long it takes for coal to develop, correct? They have found so many things in coal, it's not funny. Now, if something is embedded in coal and coal takes, is theorized to take millions of years to form, how can you find watches in coal, jewelry in coal, tenon shoes in, in coal? How do you dig below the earth and you just get there in 2021 and you dig right into a house, a house with a golden floor, mirror, uh, uh, murals on the wall, murals, crystal murals on the wall, and then you go outside and you see a forum and it's a mother with a dress on that looks like she, you know, she's walking out there on Sunday, holding two children, skipping along, kicking a ball. What, 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 what? See, it sounds weird, doesn't it? It won't. It won't. You, you know what? All of you are going to struggle with these discoveries biblically. Because here's what they'll do. They're going to say, well, wait a minute. I thought we were in caves digging rocks. And let me explain something to you. The only materials that will not melt and dissolve back into the earth is stone. Everything else is going to be melted, right? That's why certain structures look the way they look. Because, see, if you build a house and you have a stone footer, do you not know that over the course of about five years, if it will last that long, at the very top of the footer, where the wood sits, the concrete changes. So if certain items were actually footers, well then, that changes everything. And indeed, right? We have, there are a lot of places on earth that have telltale signs. That, that wooden structures and granite structures and other structures were placed atop these 
different places. In fact, that these columns that you see standing and everything else, I know you've seen the movies, but a lot of these places, those were footers, something else. Hmm? Something else. It's going to be very confusing for people because they read the Bible and they're so comfortable with what man has told them and taught them. It's very difficult to shake. What everybody admits as being the truth. See, everybody admits we're here. We will not admit collectively something else is here. So we have a problem with it. We've been taught in man's kingdoms. And that's how we believe until something else is introduced. And if it's introduced, because you're going to see this, you're going to see something introduced to all people. Here's what's going to happen. The people will see it with their own eyes. But they're going to turn to CNN or Fox or one of these other news channels and look on the Internet and WhiteHouse.gov or whatever the case is to validate, to get some validation. I'm telling you the truth. It doesn't matter who the Christian is. That's where they're going. They're not going to Bob Vila over here. They're not going. They're going to the very places they say they cannot trust. And they're going to try and validate this story. They're going to say, I want to hear what they have to say about it. I got to see if this is real. Although everybody will say. It does. It's right there. There it is. But 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 what do we make of this? Let's tune in to the news and find out. You know how I know this? Because every time something major happens, it does not matter who is who. The world tunes into their televisions to validate the information every single time. If something happens from space, they already know it. Most, if not all Christians, to validate that story, they tune into the news or track down or they really flood the NASA website and the JPL website. They do. And the ESU, the European Space Agency, they, they flood those websites. The very people they say they cannot trust. We do it slick too. We go in there. I'm going to see what NASA's lying about. No, 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 you're not. You're going in there to see what they're talking about. That's what you're doing. Now, we present the story with a bit of pride saying, well, look at what NASA says. They say it's so-and-so, they're lying. But the point is, why did you go there and check in the first place? Because the truth is this. You're going to go to those sources. You're not going to Charlie over there. You're not going to tune in to some brand new news channel you know nothing about. You're going to the trusted news channels that you grew up with, something you know about. That's where you're going. You can scoff. You can point fingers and everything else, but you went there to get the info. See, some people know exactly what I'm talking about. And we cover it up real good, too, don't we? They can never tell the truth. Well, how do you know? Well, because I listen to them every day. Oh, I got you. I got you. We do that same thing. That's our validation. Are you kidding me? I'm not going to gripe about that. But you're living in those days. That's exactly what people are going to do. Military action takes place. They hear a rumor online. Somebody makes a show and they do. Somebody shares some information. There's been an explosion. A small tactical nuclear weapon in the Middle East. And it spreads all over the Internet. And everybody's talking about it. You know what people are doing? Well, let me just turn to see what Fox or CNN is saying. They're lying about it anyway. Let me see what they're saying. That's what you see. It, it never fails. It happens that way every single time when nothing is happening. And people have to dig up stories in the back burners. That's when they go to these other places. When something major happens, the world tunes in just like they did when somebody landed on the, new, uh, on the moon. Right? Do you know why? Because that's how humanity operates. Hopefully they won't do that if they say something is in the heavens. Just sitting there. Hopefully people won't go out there and look. I know they will. But, but you know, that's just how it works. Nevertheless, where we are, right? Because I'll, I'll say something. You guys, but you have to make a decision. You really do. You have to make a decision. You're going to have to make a decision about the doctrine you follow. It's, it's not my decision. It's not anybody else's decision. It's yours. You're going to have to make a decision about what doctrine you follow. What I mean by that, how you handle 
things that are happening in the world. You're going to have to make a decision. The time of double-mindedness is getting to the point where any double-mindedness is going to cost you something. And see, that's going to be very unfortunate. This happens in a lot of countries. The USA has been blessed not to have endured the grunt of what the rest of the world has. We don't have in our living memory anybody coming and invading the USA, do we? We have been, we've been really blessed. We really have been. Because I'm, I'm going to ask you an honest question, right? You go to these struggling countries and you see them trying to produce crops and everything else I mean, they're breaking their necks and it's not working correct bad soil something happens just whatever the case is it's just the work out too well you go to a country like germany who's doing the same thing but you also see them manufacturing things in germany and europe right they're exporting lots of things they have a lot of know-how in fact german engineering is some of the best in the world we know this don't we Second to German, German engineering or some of the small trinkets that everybody's used to having. Now, I'm an engineer, right? So engineers mess with um, parts. We deal with a lot of parts, a lot of stuff like that, right? And we tend to go to manufacturers who are uh, kind of steady in what they do. You know that most of those parts come from China, even though we don't have good relations with China publicly, most of the parts that engineers utilize are from China. Do you know why? It's not necessarily because they're cheaper. That's not why. Not why at all. It's the sheer variety and ingenuity of how they do their products and get them right back over here, right? They can work wonders with the small things. They really can. They're, they're, they're great engineers. They really are. Why wouldn't a real engineer buy only USA products? They can't afford to. They can't do that. And they can't wait. They can't do that. They can't wait. Though I have to admit, when the USA makes a product for engineers, and they set up a company and the infrastructure for that, it is so awesome. And I wish they had more. The problem is you have a lot of people who have, they have in their minds and want to get rich. They're not going to work for a low amount doing something they believe is worth more than that. And everybody in the USA is trying to run their own business, right? They are. Capitalism gone wrong. That's when everybody is, is not really, they don't have the idea of supporting the USA. They have the idea of getting rich. And so that's what they focus on. And when they do that, you know, the same product you can buy in China, um, they, they can't even uh, get the parts for over here in the U.S., they can't get the materials for or anything else. Anyway, we drive the price too high. So what the USA does, because we don't really manufacture lots, we manage the world's inventory. Do you guys know that? And we provide security services for a great many people. We do. So we, we are the police of this world. Here's the problem, though. As the police of this world... The police come from citizens. The citizens are changing internally, aren't we? We're changing in our belief system and what we permit, what we overlook and all these things. And that type of, uh, well, immorality is really degrading our resolve, our stance, our ability to govern things. What would happen if a bunch of immoral people were in leadership? The outcome wouldn't be so good, would it? Well, the fruit would be immoral, basically, right? It would be immoral. It wouldn't be right. It would be wrong. It would be immoral. And basically, that's what we see, correct? Don't we see immoral, the immoral outcome of a great many things? We also see the populace, the federal government in the first place, and it was the banks who funded them for the sake of the rest of the states, want it. It's got too big. It outgrew us. Right? At any rate, immorality is just like cancer, right? To a big body. And we have a lot of it. But there's some things we have forgotten, folks. 
And this is the controversial part. I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to make it short and sweet. I won't go into any weird topics tonight. Maybe. But uh, I'm going to make this short and sweet. As a, as a Christian, we like moral things. We do. We like moral things. All too often, we like moral things, but we practice in a way that does not quite support the Lord's word, how the Lord intended his word to be supported. Here's what I mean by that. It's just when, uh, this is the controversial part. Although we are politically neutral, you guys still have your party affiliations, correct? You still have them. You still have strong opinions about how the government operates. All of us do. But we've forgotten some things. In fact, it's, it, it, it's almost, um, it spawned a prayer for me earlier today. It did. We have things happening in the world. We have military uh, destabilization issues happening all over the place. We have uh, just some threats you wouldn't believe, right? Most people are not aware of the military arsenal that a lot of countries have. Most things are, that's just like, let me, let me give you a challenge thing here, something to think about. What do you guys think about um, drones and, and, and autonomous vehicles in the sky, and robots and things of that nature? What do you guys think about that? You think that's some years off until we have, uh, you know, something, something really, really, really uh, usable that we can actually use against other nations and other nations possibly can use against us? Or do you think we're there already? In truth, have you guys ever heard of an assassination platform? Have you heard of that yet? Do you know what an assassination platform is? Of course, an assassination platform takes human intervention, but it's also bound with artificial intelligence, which means in the absence of the slowness of a human response, it can make a decision and will make a decision. Assassination platforms are much like your drones that you have, right? Right? Do you guys know about many countries who have drone swarms? Do you know about that? Expect to see in this day and age we live in a war over your head that you may not understand, and it has to do with those silly lights. Has gone so far beyond the norm. Right, because a lot of people think about missiles and big guns and things like that. Right, those are all fine and dandy, but here's the problem. Here's the problem with that. Right, before a craft can ever get close to utilize those weapons, uh, like an Apache in 1991, it didn't have to. The other people couldn't even see the Apache before, and it could deploy its weapons against somebody without being seen. You get the OH-58 with the observation helicopter go out there and pinpoint your targets, and the Apache could could it could engage from, you know, they're outside of striking distance of the enemy, no matter who it was. And it was very quiet, the way it's, the way it's built. It's built very uh, efficiently. And, and uh, it can be very quiet, but that's out of date. We have super scan radar systems, I'm going to call them, which means you can see your enemy coming from countries away. And if you can see your enemy coming, you can also, this, that, and the other, but they don't interact in war the way you would think. It's that they're certainly not doing dog fights. Right? It's not what they're doing. Most of them know they're going to go up against drones. It's not feasible to shoot a bunch of drone swarms out of the air. You'd waste too much money. You'd be out of ammo. That's what Iran is going to do to Israel before they catch on. Hopefully, they, they, they already know about this, but they know there's really nothing they can do about it. See, about every day, Iran is making just thousands of missiles every single day. While everybody's talking about the nuclear problem in Iran, right? Iran is making thousands of missiles per day. And if you send a missile barrage against any country, it doesn't matter how many bullets you have, you don't have the intercept systems to get them all. You just don't. So if Iran decided to send 3,000 missiles per minute towards Israel, something's going to get hit, wouldn't you say? That's precisely what they can do right now. So about 10 years ago, they said, well, guys, Iron Dome won't do. 
Patriot systems won't do. Hawk has been retired. These systems won't do. They're going to be overwhelmed. Right? You can't deploy something like SeaWiz. They have things like SeaWiz on the ground, which can just shoot things all over the place. But then you would deplete your ammunition in no time. Iran has drone swarms, which is a missile that will launch hundreds of tiny little drones out of it, full, packed full of explosives. So even if you shoot the propellers off, if it hits the ground, you're done for. Kapoof, it's going to go off. Right, those are drone swarms. They deploy and go all over the place. We have them. They can take out, you know, a few football fields of, of things at the same time. So about 10 years ago. They started to develop lasers. Did you guys notice for you guys who were into crafting and everything, they had these home-built lasers that came out about 10 years ago, too. Do you guys remember that? With the blue lasers and the green lasers and the red lasers. Now, most of those lasers are blue or CO2 lasers, right, that you can buy. That can chop through half-inch wood, you know, two, three, four-inch wood. Have you ever seen those? Yes. Anybody can go buy one, Right. And, and they can be dangerous because those things are powerful. Anyway, they came out with this strange theory. And they say, hey, guys, we're going to have to develop lasers because they already have some major units deployed. We're going to have to come out with some lasers to overwhelm the drone, drone swarms, to disable them before they ever hit the ground. Space Command was created, uh, what had, it, had the green light, right? But Donald Trump was chosen to introduce it to the populace. You know why? One of the real reasons was Donald Trump was a Republican president. The Republicans are always the conservative ones when it comes to money. They're not just going to throw, take a bunch of money and pour it into a program and say, well, let's see how it turns out. No, because they knew that if they lost the program with the Democratic president, the Republicans would say, and say wait a minute, why do we need that? And so what they had to do was they had to launch this program with a Repu in Republican leadership so that the funding, wouldn't be interrupted. Because in this case, you need more than your black budget. You also need the public budget to manage Space Command. Anyway, having said that, Space Command was primarily interested in space-based defense weapons, lasers, like the uh, assassination platforms, which is a space-based laser that can deploy at any given time, hitting any target within seconds or diode, that's not what it is. It's not going to degrade. So long as it has a power source, it can operate. Which means you can hit the surface of the earth within, at the speed of light. And powerful is not the word for it. Silent is a word for it because you can't hear it launch. Even, even uh, particle, weapon, uh, particle beam weapons and, and rail systems are inefficient. Highly inefficient to, to uh, too much voltage. I believe that the rail gun that they have deployed now that they're testing on ships, it requires uh, 6 million amps to fire. That's a lot of amperage. 6 million amps. The one, the one that they're currently working on, I'm not going to tell you the name of it. You can look it up if you want. But there are two models of it that they, they've they been working on this thing for a long, 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 long time. And it's still out there. And they they're trying to get the power source. Uh, down to a manageable size, and CERN is really helping out with that. Because um, back in the 70s, the Navy filed a patent. Now, I may be telling you something new, but this patent had in it everything CERN is doing. It also had uh, certain craft in it and the description of those craft and how those craft operated. Set the patent off, so all you have to do is look it up. It had all the theories, mathematics, how to how it would work. And indeed, if you make a small model of this and you know your mathematics, you can replicate the, the same thing that they're doing in your home. Some people call this craft an aurora. It's already been filed, right? I was back in the 70s, by the way, when they filed it at the patent office. But here's the funny part. You know what they were talking about the paper? They were talking about quantum computing. They were talking about quantum space and quantum gravity. They were talking about antimatter, how to uh, store, eject, um, and use plasma to distribute that so they could fly in a cavity. They were talking about a whole bunch of stuff. And it's right there at the patent office. In fact, there are quite a few things at the patent office. Anyway, the Navy filed this. The way the Navy files things is they just don't file ideas. 
They file the proofs, not just the concepts, but how they worked it out. It's right there at the patent office, the center. Kind of looks like the thing they saw in Belgium. Actually, it looks just like it. The Navy. <laughs> and anyway, what they were doing was they were working with plasma. They were working with microwaves to overcome gravity in our atmosphere. When they made the cavity, they found out they could fly silently. It's not that it's silent. It's just that you can't hear it. You can't hear that frequency range. Animals can, but you cannot. You can feel it in your body if it ever gets close enough. But you cannot hear it with your ear. They're by no means silent. You just can't hear them with your ear. U.S. Navy. Right? U.S. Navy. Anyway, so we have all these different things that have been filed. They're going to name them, and they're not going to know what they are because they don't know what the nature of things is right now. They don't know what the nature of things is right now because they refuse to use their discernment is the point I'm getting to. People are not utilizing their own discernment. They're searching the Internet to find their facts about everything. Thus, they have a collective mind a hive mind, because they're believing the same thing about people based upon what people are writing. They're not utilizing discernment. There's an ongoing argument about, you know, all the, this, these fights and Democrat, Republican presidents and all this. There's a common ideology, hive mind mentality concerning the presidents. But I wonder who's going to stand up. And quote the word of God concerning this. This is what I want to share with you. See, I'm trying to point out a contrast between how we believers operate, but what the word of God has already stated and how fast we forget it or just simply don't believe it. God help us if we're trying to punch holes in the word of God so that we can agree with those things in the kingdoms of men because this is called high deceit. I'm going to read something. Because you know what? Your leadership, you're not there. You don't exist to be their friends. That's not what you're here for. That is not why you're here. You're not here to agree or disagree with any of them. You're here to agree with your Lord and Savior. Who, by the way, does not serve presidents. Let me read something. You ready for this? I'm going to read something. The king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? Mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O king Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken. The kingdom is departed from thee. Now listen, King Nebuchadnezzar was up there talking. Wait a minute. Isn't this great Babylon I built? By my resolve, I did this. I saw this. I did this. I established that. I'm running this. I'm doing this. Isn't that how presidents and kings all over the place speak? He was interrupted by the living God. A voice boomed out of heaven. While he was yet speaking, a voice said, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken. The kingdom is departed from thee. They shall drive thee from men. And thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make thee eat grass and oxen. And seven times shall pass over thee. Until thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men. And giveth it to whomsoever he will. And if God appoints a man as a king in a country where you live. Don't you see it? It's up there in age. Sometimes when I'm looking at President Biden, I'm like, is, is he going to fall over today? This guy's feeble. And I'll stand up in spirit and rebuke the ways of men that tyrants would love to have in the world and ask the Lord to demonstrate once again that he appoints who rules. 
But see, I've never done this with a large group of people. You know that? Never, not ever. Because it was too controversial. And people wouldn't understand anyway. They certainly wouldn't join me in the prayer. So tonight, I ask right before you that the Lord demonstrate once again that he is the most high who ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will to accomplish his will in the earth according to the children in that kingdom. We will have, we will have the result the Father spoke upon our lives. He will appoint whomsoever he will to ensure that his word never fails in any part according to us. See, the world, the world does not know his word. We do. They don't know his word. We do. A person who is, who is stuck in their own ego, they don't know his word. We do. We depend on it. The Lord can change the hearts and the minds of anybody who so chooses. You know who made Pharaoh? He got said, I know he won't. I'm going to harden his heart. So he continues to tell you no. Because every time, every time Pharaoh said no to Moses, God demonstrated. And his own people saw the demonstration and began to fear the Lord. See, the only way God's people would follow Moses is if they feared the Lord enough to know that Moses was called of the Lord. For 400 years, it was like there was no God to them. All of a sudden, when Moses showed up, when it was time to go into the wilderness, God began to move. He did not move prematurely to satisfy someone's fears. He didn't do that. He didn't move to satisfy or to give somebody a little bit of hope so that they could continue another day. That's not what he did. God shows up with purpose. Just like he purposed all of us, so everything he does is with purpose. But if we stay steeped in the opinions of men, then what's your discernment for? Why did the Lord give you insight? Why is it that you know people and nobody else around you does? Why is it that some of you, you know exactly how people are around you. And because you don't say anything, you're shocked when that person turns out the way he did. And you're saying, why can't I control this? Why can't I do this in, in, in on my timing for my benefit? I knew that person was going to say that. I knew this person was going to do that. I knew this was going to go that route. That's part of your discernment. Not to be used to fill your bank account. That was quite serious. But how many of us believe men over the word of God? How many of us believe that leaders are put there and it was a mistake? You could be from Afghanistan, American. You didn't have to be a European. You didn't have to be an Italian. You can be from anywhere in a country at any given time by the hatred and the disagreements of men. But it's time for us also to turn full circle of God to call it out again. Don't reserve it and hold it back, but remind us. That's what the entire body of Christ is for. Don't sit there and look at me and say, well, you're supposed to know all this. No, I'm not. We're, it, we're the body of Christ, not the single person of Christ, the body of Christ. I just happen to have the microphone, but we're in the body of Christ, and every single member in the body of Christ is critical and important. Because if your right foot was gone in the morning, you could not go to work. It would mess up your whole day. When a body part is missing, you have to learn to live without it. But we take it for granted every time we have a right foot attached. We don't even look at it. Hopefully you wash it, but we don't look at it. We don't pay attention to it. It's a foot. But if it was missing, you would cry. Do you see how that works? The most insignificant thing the rest of the body covers up, doesn't look at, never gets attention. If it were missing, it would halt the entire body. Whatever capacity you are that you serve in, whatever thing you know in the Word of God, let me tell you something. If you believe in Jesus of Nazareth, in truth, you're part of the body of Christ. And if you go missing or if you go silent, 
you inhibit the entire body. If we start giving ourselves over to the practices of mere men, because I need to remind you, in your families, you weren't like the rest of your family. You already tried that. You weren't even like the rest of your peers. You already tried that. You complained. Why am I so different? Why does everybody else get away with it, but I get caught? Why did they take the same thing I did, but now I'm hooked? You complained about it. So I'm going to remind you. You were put in a place. You're the only one like your kind amongst where you are. You're part of the body of Christ to make a difference where you are. That's why nobody else around you was like you. That's why nobody else around you can see the way you see. That's why. Because the Lord made you different. He didn't make you a mere part of the world who's going to believe everything man says. He put you right smack dab in the middle of a place that you are to change. You disrupted a cycle of Satan that you have no idea about. Just by being put in the place where it doesn't matter if you're adopted or born in a test tube. You were put where you were put. If you believe in Yahshua HaMashiach, you're part of the body of Christ. And you are critical. Critical to the entire body. You're not to go hide yourself. Run up under the bed. Pull the covers over your head. Shake in fear in a closet. You're to stand. Because if you don't stand, the whole body is inhibited. Do you guys understand that? You have discernment, and I can assure you that we've hid long enough. We've sold ourselves into the world, didn't we? But the part of us that belongs to the living God, we locked them away. That's a story in the Bible about that. The God-given son was locked away, put away, until one day everything started failing. And the one they locked away became the salvation of the rest. You hid yourselves in the world by becoming like the world. You speak their language. You have their arguments in you. Now the world is failing. Activity. Out of bondage. You know, the one that trusts the word of God. The one that has the ongoing issue with the world. The one that will say, oh, yes, I'm a this and I'm a that, but you still, you know you're not. Of all things you desire, the approval of your Lord and Savior. Of all things, you, know, you want to perform something heavenly, don't you? You want to be a part of the kingdom of God. That's your true desire. Fit in with those in the world. And for the most part, that's what a lot of people have been doing. And when you know it, that's also in prophecy. That's why the, listen, that's why the ten virgins wake up because they were sleeping. You know what sleeping means? God gave scripture about sleeping. Sleeping means you're in the world. That's why he said you're children of the day, not of the night. You don't sleep in the night as those of the world. Those of the world sleep in the night. But you're not of the night, you're of the day. You're children of the light. You did sleep in the night. God called you out of the darkness. Those who sleep in the night are still in sin. And you've hid yourself amongst those of sin. You've hid yourself in Sodom and Gomorrah, justifying the city. Time for you to come out and be a body part. Those of you who know scripture, then speak the scripture. Those of you who are feet, you're going to carry a load. Those of you who are hands, time for you to go to work. The shoulders, you're going to lift a lot. The torso, you got to supply all those limbs. We know who the head is. It's not us. I can assure you the Lord has already given his decrees, commands, and we know his desires. Time for us to carry it out. And the body of Christ in this earth, like a cartoon character, flopping all over the place. No. If we all look to the same source, 
That's what gets rid of division. If every time you took a step, your right arm moved, every time you went to open a door and your foot kicked, you'd be in big trouble. Right? That source is you. In order for the body of Christ to be effective, we must receive the word from one source. And that source is Christ. He being the head of the whole body. And there is no least in the body. All parts of the body are critical. And I'll say it again. If the most insignificant part of the body, being the pinky toe, slams into the corner of a table, what happens to the rest of the body? I'll tell you. You go, mm, your brain starts going out of whack. You want to say words that aren't even on the curse list. You do. Because you hit your pinky toe. Your whole body stops. You go down and you embrace that little tiny pinky toe that you didn't even think about for months. Realize, oh my Lord, I've got to watch the way I walk. Somebody's got to move this table. Somebody's going to hurt themselves bad with this. Right? we got to understand that. Because God put the power in you. He didn't put it in the presidents. He put it in you. Put that. In. And all those people in the White House, all those people in the media, they had to make a choice. Time to make a choice. God silenced King Nebuchadnezzar and thrust him out of his own kingdom. You know why he thrust King Nebuchadnezzar out? Because Daniel was there. Daniel was established in that kingdom. Because Daniel was established in the kingdom and seasoned with the first king, God could easily bring in another. My goodness. So leadership around this earth, when you're established in the word of God, people, the Lord moves. Do you understand that? You can complain all day. That's not going to solve anything. If you become established in the word where you are, that's when the Lord moves. It's just like the book of Daniel. Hmm? Just like the book of Daniel. And that's based on the body of Christ. It is not based on anything else. These are still the kingdoms of men. You're not here to agree with men. Daniel did not agree with King Nebuchadnezzar. Proceeded for King Nebuchadnezzar. And King Nebuchadnezzar rewarded Daniel, which in turn saved his own people. Because he was put in such a position of power through two kings, not just one. Hmm? Remember that. Please remember that. Daniel followed the word of the Lord, but he did not follow the word of the king. But now we've come to the time you all knew was coming. Many of you, how many of you have come to the come to the realization that wait a minute, the, the rhetoric that people used to have five years ago is dead now. Even the arguments, even the counter arguments, they're all dead. It sounds like a bunch of flies. And for some reason you have an insight. But it's all in vain. You're trying your best to prop those people up you respect and like and to agree with him. But in your heart of hearts, you know it's a wasted conversation. It's almost like the effort is no good. Like the protest won't work. The statements and the intelligence is dead on arrival. 
time that doeth the Lord's way. Right? Imagine a person who's not anointed to preach or to speak on air. You know what will happen? They're going to get tired of it. After some time, they say, it's not for me. I'm gone. I'm out of here. When somebody's anointed to do something, right? The Lord fills them up and empowers them to do that one thing. They never get tired of it. For some reason, they keep coming back. Like one of those things that won't flush. They just keep coming back. No matter how many times you flush, it pops right back up again. That'll wake you up on it. Somebody just got a bad visual. But that's the way it is. When the Lord anoints you to do something, there's an internal passion. It's like you're built for it. Listen, I'm telling you something. There's not one person of a natural anointing from the Lord to do something. That's for you to find something you're probably already doing or you burn inside to do every day. See, people have tried to be slick and they've tried to tell you what your calling was to get you in a field of bondage and some of you you just now found you now know what i'm talking about see somebody just caught that you see yep that's right this, this is not this is oh see that's why it's important that you read the word of god yourselves to have your personal relationship with christ listen listening to me okay that's fine you better go back to the word of God and verify everything and let the Lord speak to you directly. I can only assist what the Lord is truly your teacher. Hope you understand that. I can only encourage, but your joy comes from the Lord only. I really do hope you understand that. Because it's time to get real behind our faith and not hide another day. And Lord knows I pray that he shut the mouths and remind us again, it is he who appoints kings. That God rules in the kingdoms of men and he may give those kingdoms to whomsoever he will. I pray the Lord grants that request so we're all reminded and that we all know so that we can all be prepared for some of the true illusions, deceits, and delusional periods that will come upon this earth.